Stop. Rolling. Red <laughs> Is my mic right there? He just went for it. Felt like he went through my throat. <sighs> Hey everyone, welcome back to another About Us series. I thought I was only gonna make one video, but then you guys asked me so many questions. So, here we go, part two to the About Us that's about me. And I'm gonna try to film this entire thing with Jinx, so good luck understanding any answers. <laughs> here we go. <sighs> okay. Amy's very organized today. Super organized. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna go in order. So let's do this. What's your inspiration for your hair color? Is it something you do as part of the show you and Dave do or is it just for fun? Um, yeah, I've been a lot of hair colors. It's just for fun. It's usually me spending too much time on Pinterest seeing like, oh, that girl has really cool hair. Let me see if I can do that. <laughs> Had a few fails. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh my God. Do you have a college degree and do you need one to train birds professionally? <laughs> Thank you, love your content. Are you stuck in my hair? Okay. All right, it was not working. Uh, what was the question? Do I have a degree? No, I never went to college. I really didn't like high school, so there was no way I was gonna sign up for more of that. <laughs> what is your favorite bird success story? Ooh. My first project, Bird Storm. I think he's my favorite success story because I knew so little going in that still afterwards, getting that bird to free fly, I had no idea what I had just accomplished until years later. And then I was like, whoa, that was awesome. Ooh, what is one experience with a bird or client where you look back and think you could have handled or done something differently? <laughs> Most of my interactions with humans, I look back and think, why can't I be more like Dave? I would say a majority of them. I tend to let oh, just certain things get me really fired up and passionate, and I don't have that super nice sugar-coated delivery that makes a majority of personalities take the information in well. I just have that blunt to the point, this is exactly what I mean sort of way, and it doesn't usually go super well. So, I would say majority of interactions. <laughs> if you could have adopted any of your previous project birds, who would you choose? Hands down, Lefty. It's my biggest regret. I would have adopted Lefty. I wish we would have. Yeah. It kind of like haunts me, to be honest. What's your side of the story when you and Dave first met? I was actually just looking at a scrapbook that had this story in it because I kept everything. So I had like brochures and tickets and all this stuff. I'm a heavy scrapbooker. And so back in the day, I used to do it for real, physically. Now I do yearly keepsake books for my daughter Capri. And, um, and so they're all on the computer and then I have them printed out at the end of the year. So I do her birthday to her next birthday in every single book. So my story is, I thought I was gonna marry this acapella singer named Nathan, and I went to all of his shows. And he was performing at the Coeur d'Alene Fair, and my friend Janelle was like, hey, do you wanna come? My family goes every year. My family was not into going to fairs, so there was no chance they were gonna go. So I went with my friend Janelle. We watched all of their shows, which was like three a day, and in between their performances, Dave came on the stage. And I literally remember my girlfriend Janelle being like, he's, so hot, he has to be taken. And <laughs> so we didn't even bother crushing on him. And uh, so I went up afterwards after his show and got a picture with him. And I think I was 14, Dave was 17. And we were pretty much complete strangers. That's all I had seen of him. And then the following year, I was checking out colleges and my parents are basically like, you need to go and see if you're actually gonna go to this, check it out, see it in person, all that stuff. So we planned a time to go and Dave was performing indoors. And I was like, hey, I saw this guy at the fair. We should go check it out. So we went to that show and my parents got to see him. He didn't come out after the show, so they didn't get to meet him or anything. And then the following year, he was performing in Spokane, which was his hometown. And I had driven my friend Janelle, the one from the fair, uh, an hour and a half to go see Civilized Animal, which was an underground band at the time. And it was her favorite band. And when we got there, the show was canceled. There was no warning, no nothing. They just like had to call it and cancel the show. 
We were super bummed. We were walking back to my car. We couldn't believe it. We'd driven an hour and a half and she saw a billboard that said Dave Womack performing, da 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 da. It was that night and it started in 15 minutes. And she was like, just take me to that instead. Let's go. It's like a few roads from here. So I was like, okay. So we ran and uh, made it to that show. Afterwards, I got a photo with him. Again, still kind of strangers. And, uh, and then after that, at some point, I, I loved underground bands. So I went to a lot of bands that most people hadn't heard of. I kept a little GeoCities website with a list of all the bands I'd seen and all the entertainers I'd seen, just to kind of keep track for if they ever hit it big. And I'm like, oh, I saw them before they were big. So uh, yeah, I kept this little website and I had a really goofy photo of myself on it. And Dave found it because I had listed him under like, other types of entertainers that I had seen. And he found my website, just wrote me, asked me out, um, but said he wasn't looking for anything serious. So yeah, we went out and I think three months later we were engaged. What was it about birds that gave you that feeling where you realized in your heart you were a bird person and were passionate about and dedicated to helping these animals? Was there a specific moment or experience? Yes. So Dave, in my mind, was always a professional. Like he, he was so amazing with birds and the clients. I was very uncomfortable with both um, in the very beginning because I knew nothing. And so I remember it was working with our client Sherry and Dave was working with her with her Harlequin macaw and she had a bunch of other birds and Storm was there, that Amazon. And he brought Storm home just in an effort to like work with him because what really got us sometimes was just seeing we, have, we would have certain clients where we'd be working with specific birds, but we'd see other birds and be like, what about that one? And they'd be like, no, 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 but he's not trainable. He's really old. He's been like this for years. He's set in his ways. He won't change. Nobody can touch him. He's too aggressive. Like whatever the, the excuse was, that bird was deemed untrainable. And that interested me because it was like, well, why? And what made so many people just get to the point of giving up and not trying? Like maybe there's something you can try that will get through to that bird. And so Storm and like getting through to him and consulting other trainers, because I was consulting different types of trainers that work with different types of animals to come and like check on me and make sure that I was doing things properly. Um, was really the turning point for me. It was kind of like, we don't need to just focus on the birds that other people want to train. We should be focusing on the birds that people think are not trainable. And that was, um, that was really it for me and putting it public out there to be openly judged by people on what was working and what was not working. I mean, I was not amazing at it. Like I got stuck on the stairs by storm. He trapped me on the stairs and I would call Dave and be like, when you come home, <laughs> look out, I'm on the stairs. I can't come down, storm's mad at me. Like there were really embarrassingly just horrible moments where I didn't know what I was doing and I would like set him off wrong and I didn't know how that was happening or how to like decrease all of that. And, um, and Dave would of course laugh at me, but then he was also there to, to help me along and offer me instructions and ideas and stuff. So I think honestly, it was my very first project bird that brought it all to the surface for me of like, if he's workable at 45 years old on a hamburger based diet, you should be able to work with any other bird that's sitting in the corner. And there's just not an adequate reason for that. You're back. Love you. Love you. Can I kiss? What's your nickname? What's your nickname? Yeah, that was such a sweet one. Do you want to do our handshake? <laughs> Good job. Do you want to do your singing? Good boy. Ah. Good boy. What's so funny? <laughs> What's so funny? Jinxie. Hey. What's so funny? <laughs> Good boy. You need to get your laugh longer because it's gotten really short. How about this one? Okay. <laughs> Dave's least favorite. Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Good boy. Ah, you went down? <laughs> Is that a yes or no? Would you ever get other animals while having birds? Um, no. I, I just don't feel like a lot of other animals are compatible with birds and I'm just kind of over trying, so. 
How was your experience having a newborn baby Capri to take care of along with many birds? So many pets get rehomed when babies come along. So I was wondering how you manage those first few months. I think for us, a lot of it comes from not having the birds 100% in our space because I think a lot of it is the stress of having a newborn baby, maybe not having things down pat with your birds and then worrying about your bird constantly waking up and making your baby mad or upset or crying. Um, so we just kind of eliminated those variables by having birds in different sections. Oh my gosh, he wants your protein bar so bad. Okay, Jinxie, I have stuff. We can do, we can do this stuff. Ba -ba -ba. Ah! Good job, can I kiss? Good oh boy. Stop looking at protein bar. Where do you see yourself in bird tricks in five years and what goals do you and Dave have as a couple? Dave, what goals do we have? Um, one of the goals that I recently set, I just love you. One of the goals I recently set last year or the year before was to take one amazing family vacation every year. Like really save up, plan for it, let the family be involved. Last year we did Africa, which is something that we've talked about forever that everybody was like, don't do it until your daughter's older and can actually remember and enjoy it. We've even gone so far as to like ask Capri where she wants to go. She picked Japan. And so for now I'm getting us these Sakurako boxes where it's all these items from Japan so that she can kind of get to know the culture a little bit better in preparation of going. So that's been one of my goals. I don't know if it's necessarily Dave's, but I think it's fulfilled something that he's always wanted for our family as well. And as far as bird tricks, I would love to have like a big, <laughs> you just want attention, stop ignoring me. I would love to have a much bigger operation and be able to reach more people. We really struggle reaching more international clients. Um, we struggle expanding everything as much as we would like to. So I would hope that those struggles are kind of over <laughs> at five years, but maybe that's not a good thing. Maybe it's a good thing to struggle with trying to meet demand. So who knows? Some of these are really difficult. Oh my gosh, okay. This person said, I see a lot of bird questions, but I really wanna know your skincare routine. Your skin looks so great. Well, I hope you feel that way about this video because I'm not actually wearing any makeup. Ha ha ha, except for mascara. I try not to <laughs> wear a lot of makeup because when we don't have to travel and do shows and stuff, like that's a lot of makeup uh, for the shows and everything. So anytime I don't have to wear it, Oh my gosh, we can't get content. I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it. So I try not to wear it. I use like this really nice oil that comes from a chick that is actually local that I found at a farmer's market and it feels amazing and that's all I'm, I'm wearing. And then I bought this like light thing to actually start using on my skin because I felt like I couldn't get my skin really clear. So it's a blue light and I use that on my skin now, but I've only used it for like the last five days or something like that. So it's pretty new. I just love you, love your face, I wanna squish it. If you had to stop training birds and select another living creature to train, what creature would you choose? Oh no, and I can't choose birds? I don't think I'd really be good with anything else. What animal do you guys think I'd be capable of training? I think I might not be flattered by your answers, <laughs> but I don't know, what else should I train? I know that all animals are trainable, I just don't know that I'm compatible with all animals and their type of training. You know what I mean? Like I'm not strong enough to hold back a dog. So, yeah. <laughs> Does Capri ever ask to have a sibling? Um, she asks to adopt her friends. What steps, oh, blah, 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 blah. what steps did you take to become a bird trainer and what steps could I take? Okay, so here's, here's my thing with this because I know that there's a lot of questions about like how I got into bird training and what makes me a professional and what makes anyone a professional and blah, blah, blah. I was taught by the birds. That is my education. So Project Birds really taught me so much. And although I use technically kind of the same training methods with all my project birds, the application of those training methods is different based on how the bird responds to those training methods. I hope that makes sense. And through my experiences working with birds is how I've gained the knowledge. So I know that birds respond differently to different things. So there's no one size fits all. Um, I also know that species have their little quirks about them. Star and species have their quirks like you. And so that kind of teaches you a lot where you go in with a little bit of understanding of like, 
I most likely will run into these scenarios based on the characteristics of that species. It's not something that you're married to as fact, but it's something that's kind of in the back of your mind of like, okay, given my experiences, thanks for waiting till I set you down. Uh, <laughs> he's like ready to come back up. So I really feel like the animals are the best teachers and that's where you gain your experience. So donating your time to a sanctuary or a rescue where you can work with birds, fostering birds. <laughs> he wants me to let him step up so badly. Um, I really think that birds are the best teachers. Dave mentioned he does 75 hard and I'm curious if you also do 75 hard with him or not. <laughs> Uh, she said, my boyfriend and I decided to do the program. We are currently on day three and oh my God, is a gallon of water hard to get through? <laughs> um, no, no to 75 hard. Um, what talks me out of 75 hard is having to work out outside. I am such a wuss. I'm like, no, I'm too cold. I'm too uncomfortable. I'm gonna slip and fall on the ice, whatever it is. I'm like, no, unless Dave invites me on a bike ride that's actually a trick just to get me to cycle. How many miles was that? 12? Yeah, no. So I don't do 75 hard. My workout routine is Mondays and Wednesdays. I do 45 minutes of cardio kickboxing. Oh my gosh. Tuesdays and Fridays, I do 45 minutes of step and 45 minutes of strength training. And then Thursdays, I do strength interval training. And Saturdays, I usually try to do an hour of cycling. I don't always make it on Saturdays because we sometimes have plans, but cycling feels so hard to me. So that's my workout routine. And I try to drink a lot of water, but so far I've had a matcha latte this morning. So nailing it. Okay, I'm gonna answer three more questions because there's so, so many and I feel like I could do this forever. So uh, who is my favorite bird and why? It's you being a psycho. Oh my gosh, Bob. If you could own any bird you do not already have, what breed or variety would it be? Um, okay, so I don't wanna own it, but I really wanna work with a Major Mitchell cockatoo. Like really, really bad. So bad. Uh, how do you feel about both Dave and Capri skydiving? I feel totally okay, because it's not me. <laughs> be honest, what really won you over, Dave or the birds? Ha <laughs> ha You guys, he had an umbrella cockatoo when I met him. I was legitimately scared of the birds. Dave definitely won me over. And he still does, even if you compete with him. You're here because of Dave. So, Dave. I was just reading them because they're so interesting. There's so many. Um, I'm so sorry that I couldn't get to all of your guys' questions. On my community tab, Rude, uh, you guys asked over like 100 questions. And so far, what I was reading, like they weren't even repeats. So I don't even know how to handle it all. So thank you guys so much for participating. Thank you for asking your questions. Thank you for bup, bup, bup. <laughs> Thank you for bup, bup, bup. <laughs> you sound like you're underwater. Ba, ba, ba. Really let that voice out, bubs. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> it's not happening. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for participating, asking these questions, wondering this stuff about me. If you like videos like this that are purely just entertaining, let me know in the comments. We're happy to make more entertaining content where you guys can feel like you get to know us better. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you guys in the next bird video. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, there you go. Ba, ba, ba. Whoa. We'll just keep it off pitch. That sounds good. <laughs> Do a little play. Good boy, bub. Good boy, bub. Bye, bub. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs>